Have you ever wondered how airplanes navigate the skies? Well, besides using landmarks, there are also highways in the sky we call Victor Airways. These routes are made up of multiple VOR facilities that airplanes use to go from point to point. In this video, EasyFly will explain you how to intercept VOR radios in the most simple way possible. Let's begin. In order to navigate with a VOR, the first thing we will have to do is to make sure we set, tune and identify the appropriate VOR frequency by referring to our sectional chart and confirming the correct Morse code. After we identified our VOR, we want to make sure we know our location relative to the VOR facility. In order to do that, we're going to twist our OVS until the needle centers with a from indication. This will tell us the airplane is currently on the 230 degree radial from the VOR and that will put us southwest of the station. And we can notice this by referring to the compass card in VOR1. Keep in mind that the VOR doesn't know the aircraft setting. The only thing the receiver can tell us is our location in relationship to the VOR. For this reason, when we're trying to know in which radial we're currently at, it's easier to center the needle with a from indication so we can see the current radial on the top portion of the compass card. After your location has been determined, select with the OBS the radial that you want to intercept. As an example, we selected the 260 radial outbound. This means that we're trying to intercept the radial and then fly away from the station. In order to do that, you have to make sure that you see a from indication after selecting the radio. Now, what heading do we fly to get to this radio? The needle will always point to the correct magnetic direction that we have to fly in order to intercept the radio. As you can notice on the compass card, the needle points to headings that range from 265 to 350. Any of these settings will work on getting you onto the selected radio. However, you want to use an angle of intercept that can save you some time in trying to get where you want to. This of course depends on your distance that you have to the VOR facility. As a rule of thumb, a 45 degree intercept angle always works great. That 45 degree intercept angle in this example is noticed by the orange ticker mark in VOR1. In this example, a heading that allows the aircraft to intercept the radio will be a heading of 305, so the aircraft should fly this heading. As the radial starts centering, you want to begin turning back again to your selected radial direction, in this case 260. And there you have it guys, the airplane intercepted the selected radial and is currently flying away from the station. Now what happens if we want to intercept the radial inbound so we can fly towards the station? The process for intercepting remains almost the same. First, we need to select the radial we want to intercept with our OVS, but this time we have to make sure the radial is located on the bottom of the compass card and the VOR flag points to the station. As an example, let's say ATC wants us to intercept the 290 radial inbound. By putting the inbound cores of the radial on top and the outbound cores on the bottom, with the flag pointing up, we are telling the VOR receiver that we want to track that radial and fly it inbound. Now, after we see the CDI deflection, the only thing we have to do, just like before, is fly one of the cardinal headings that the needle is pointing to. In this case, any heading between 105 and 040 will allow us to intercept the selected radial inbound. Now, like before, we're going to select a 45 degree intercept angle, which in this case will be a heading of 065. As the radial starts moving in, we're going to start turning to a heading of 110, which is the reciprocal heading of our selected radial that will allow us to fly towards the VOR. And that's it guys, VOR navigation made simple. Thanks for watching.